Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. What's up guys, Spencer Seck right here again. Now today's video is pretty exciting for me. I think I might have found my new favorite go-to lights for production. And those lights are the Nanlite Pavo tubes. They're RGBW lights. They're little like LED tube style lights like this. This one's kind of wrapped up currently in some barn doors and a grid, which I will talk about a little bit later in the video. Basically, you get the full RGB spectrum of colors on these lights. They're battery powered LEDs, and they come in two foot and four foot options. And the four foot option is rated at lasting around 2.2 hours. And in my practice, I would say that using these over the past couple weeks, they do actually last quite a long time. What's so great about them is that because they're battery powered, you can just kind of place them in different areas and you don't actually even have to put them on a stand to get lights in areas that you normally wouldn't be able to get a light. As you can see here, I mean, this is the two foot model here and it has barn doors on it and it has a grid uh, attached to it. But look, it's very, very light. You can kind of place it anywhere you want. It's handheld because it's battery powered and it's also very bright. So this, uh, you can see with the grid, it's very directional like this. Very bright, almost blowing out the camera right now. And it's hard to see right now because I've got this grid attached to it. But this is basically at like 10 or 15% brightness right now. So if I wanted to crank it up here, yeah, you can see how bright it gets. So the first problem that you might see with a light like this is first off, it's, I mean, this is only a two foot tube. So I mean, it's not gonna get a very broad light source for you. But right now I'm actually using a four foot tube um, to light my face. This is my key light right now for this talking head portion of the video. I'm actually using a four foot tube. So you know, in the past we've talked about using an Aperture 120D and a light dome to light some shots. Um, and how I don't usually prefer that because you're only getting like a three foot light source. Um, so that can be pretty good. A three foot light source is pretty decent, pretty, pretty soft. But this is four foot. So you're, you're gonna get an extra foot of light to wrap around your subject when using a four foot tube like that. So it's actually a really good place to start with lighting. And the fact that it's battery powered and you can just kind of put it anywhere is a big bonus for me. So as you can see in the opening little scene that I created with my wife at the front end of this video, I was able to light a scene in under two minutes using these tubes. Now the way I was able to do the opening scene was I, all I had was two light stands. Um, I actually did two different variations of this. Um, you can take a regular light stand that you would use, but then the Nanlite kit comes with these little two holders, these little clamps basically, that can screw into a quarter 20 mount. And so you can put this right onto a spud of your light stand. Just one of these alone will hold a four foot tube in place. So in the opening scene, I mean, I put one of the four foot tubes on um, a light stand just with that, just with that one little clamp holding it. But then also, I don't know if a lot of people use this or not, but I use this a lot because I'm not always able to afford a sound person on my set. So a lot of times what I do is I take a C stand and I take um, this little boom pole holder and I put it in the C stand um, and so I can get my audio. I can just put the boom pole in there and get my audio. Well, conveniently enough that, <laughs> that you know, these four foot tubes are basically the same size as a boom pole. They're like a little bit thicker, but they fit right in that holder. So if you have one of those as well, you can just take your C-stand, 
dropped right in that holder and you already have a light set up. I mean, that takes a matter of what, five seconds and you can have a light stand opened up and a light set up in it. That is kind of amazing. Now, if you look at the opening shot there, definitely could have made the light a little bit softer. I mean, I did have a four foot tube pretty close to her face, but I think the trick with these tubes is that they're kind of, a, you know, they're, they're long like this, they're horizontal, they're wide like that, which is nice because you can get wrap around your face with a wide source like that. You know, the light can tend to bleed around and that's kind of what you're looking for when you're looking for soft lighting. But it's not always perfect. You have to kind of find the right angle. I mean, right now you can see I have a key light coming from over here, I'm motivated from my window, which I normally shoot, shoot from, um, but I do have a little bit of shadow here. Definitely not softest shadow that I normally would like um, when I'm lighting but if you know if you can get the light really really close to the subject you're gonna be able to get rid of that or maybe if you can take another light and add just a little bit of fill on the other side because you can dim them so perfectly down um, you could maybe get rid of that shadow and make it look even softer but I think a lot of times when you go into lighting a scene um, you're gonna want a key light and then you want a little bit of background light well what's really cool about the tubes like that is that um, I just put it on that C stand I raised it in the air and I had a horizontal facing pointing down and it was able to fill a very large space and just put out ambient light throughout the room. Now I changed it to a little pink color just to kind of give a little spice for this video and so you could see the kind of RGB qualities of the light. But look how quickly you could um, fill up the room in the background and you can also control the, the dimming capabilities on it. So you can also control the intensity on that to make it like maybe a little bit darker than your subject in the foreground. You could easily turn that a little bit and make it even be a little bit of a hair light as well as the background light. You hear a lot of major DPs talk about the Titan tubes. Well, those are like, basically a beefier, more expensive version of these. So the pair of the Nanlite Pavo four foot tubes come in around $740, like on B&H. Um, so you get both the tubes, you get a bag for the tubes, um, you get the little mounts for the tubes. You also get a cable that can connect two tubes together and make them like be controlled by the same knob. And so that's pretty great that you can get all that in one kit. So that's super cheap, but the fact that you can get two lights for $740 that can do this much is pretty amazing. So in that opening scene to do her key light, I just took a little bit of a little light stand and I put it up on my table here right in front of where she was gonna drink the beer and kicked on that light. And it was a very, very low percentage, maybe 25, 35%. And the background light was the same thing. It was very dimly lit, and I was shooting on the Fujifilm X-T3 at 640 ISO at a, probably around an F2. Now, Nanlite did send me these lights, but I just want to be full disclosure, that's not why I'm hyping them up so much. I really do love these lights. I've been trying to get some LED tubes for a while now, and so when Nanlite reached out to me and said, hey, do you just want to play with these and tell us what you think, give us your honest opinions, I was like, heck yeah, I definitely want to do that. So over the past week, I've been able to test these lights out, and I've been able to use them in real-world environments. I actually shot a commercial last week and then I was able to use it on this music video. And I actually lit the entire performance section of the video with these lights. And I didn't even use the light stand. But before we talk about that video, I wanna thank today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. I've actually been using Squarespace for over five years now, well before they were a sponsor of the channel. It's just an awesome all-in-one platform to present your work online. I even use it for my wife's French macaron shop. Squarespace has always been an obvious choice for a website builder for me because the templates are beautiful. And as someone that wants a lot of creative control, their super customizable features like video background and Vimeo integration allows me to have just that. So head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Spencer Sakurai to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Spencer Sakurai, DP extraordinaire. <laughs> <laughs> I first started out just taking one of the two foot tubes, I kind of made it orange, and I literally set it like on a little bookshelf. And then I took one of the four foot tubes and I made it like kind of a teal green and I set it over on the fireplace mantle. And so, so far I haven't used any lights. And then I needed one kind of, I just wanted a little bit more fill, a little bit more of that orange filling the room on the front of their faces. So I just set it up on like some crown molding and gapped it to the wall. So I was able to set up and light this entire room in less than five minutes. And what's kind of fun about these lights is that you can kind of use them um, in your environment, if you just have one of these tubes on it in the background and actually makes it into a shot, no one's really gonna second guess it because people are used to seeing fluorescent tubes 
um, in reality already. So I'm always testing out lights and looking for new lights to, you know, better tools to help light my scene. And these definitely are ranking in my top favorite lights that I've ever used. I just love how portable and lightweight they are and easy to set up. They've made my setup time so much quicker. Um, I mean, can you imagine lighting an interview with one of these? That's basically how my first setup was. I mean, that's a very similar to an interview setup. I'm sure a lot of you shoot interviews in your production life. And the fact that you could light your background and your subject in less than two minutes is kind of incredible. And still get a pretty decent look. I mean, right now I'm just using two tubes again. I've got one tube in the background behind my TV just to give a little glow. And I've got this key light on me. Of course, I have a little bit of window leaking in, which is kind of filling up the room for me. Also something you can do is maybe just even drape some diffusion over this and kind of tilt the light down and let the light shine through that diffusion, filling up the whole source and making your source even bigger. That way you can light an entire body or subject rather than just like the top of a subject because these are horizontal. So you're not gonna get a huge spread out of them. Something else I've seen people do that I wanna start experimenting with is even taking one light as your kind of key light, that's a four foot light coming across like this. So that's giving you um, a nice wrap, but then taking another light and turning it vertical on its side and being able to light the entire subject this way. Now, the only thing you're gonna kind of run into when doing that is that you're going to run into some kind of catch light issues. Um, I would say that these straight lights don't have the most natural catch lights. They would kind of look like maybe a window that's far away, but you're probably gonna to wanna to use them a little bit higher than you would use a regular light. That way your catch light in your eyeball isn't looking so abnormal. Cause you're not really used to seeing horizontal lines in someone's eyes very often. And I was actually on a couple podcasts this last week. So if you want to listen to me chat about more lighting stuff like this and just what I think about some cameras that came out recently, um, I was on the Top Comment podcast by uh, Patrick Tommaso. And on that podcast, we talked about Fuji cameras because I recently just bought this Fujifilm X-T3. So definitely go listen to that if you want to hear us talk about um, just kind of why the Fuji camera is so inspiring to shoot on. I'll probably do a video over that in the future, but in, for now, you can just go listen to the podcast. And that was also on Tyler Stallman's podcast, which was pretty fun. We talked about soft light and basically um, just kind of the misconceptions of how to use light and make it softer and more natural. And you can find me on Instagram and Twitter under Spencer Sakurai. Until next time, guys, see ya.